Welcome, my friend. Seven Gray here. I hope you're all having a fabulous day out there in YouTube land. Thank you for joining me for this episode. I've entitled this, as you noticed, probably Stepfan Regrets. So it begs the question, what are the regrets that I have with the Stepfan after 12 months since my purchase? So the short answer is I don't have any regrets and that's because I have, sort of have a Buddhist view on life in general. One of the primary principles in Buddhism is acceptance and letting go. So things in the past you just sort of let it go of those, you accept those, you don't have regrets. It's not a part of the Buddhist way of thinking. That said, I was not raised Buddhist, and so this is a new habit in my life that I've had for eight or ten years, something like that. So I understand the concept of regrets. The way I view things are, what would I have done differently if I would have known what I know now back when I started into the Stefan build? So I came up with seven items, of course that I would have done differently and I'm going to go through those and I hope that you find this intriguing, interesting as perhaps you're converting a step van or doing a van build or RV or something like that. These are some tips and some tricks and some things to think about. Item number one and this is what everybody said in the comments early on when I started into the step van build. You all gave me this advice and I just flat out ignored it. So I'm giving the same advice to you and that is put your power in first. Put your insulation in first. Put those two things at the top of your list before you build anything. That It's just smart to do that. Um, and I would say electric first. Put your solar up there, get your power put in. You can power all your tools, you'll be able to charge batteries, you'll be able to charge laptops, you'll be able to have Wi-Fi hotspots, charge your phone, uh, be able to power um, kitchen appliances, all of those things. But if you get power in first and insulate things, your life will be so much better and it's worth it to sleep on the floor or whatever you need to do to get those things done first because it sets the stage for everything else and makes it way easier. So those that wrote the comments, you are right and I should have listened to you, um, but I didn't. You know, I put the bed in first and insulation way, way months down the road. And I think I would have handled it differently knowing what I know now. The next thing is my bicycle. Uh, May of last year, almost a year ago, I purchased a used bicycle from Doug in Colorado. He helped me put in the bed back here. And I've ridden it three times. Um, I have just not used it. And part of that is because it's so difficult to get in and out of the garage. Um, I think probably in hindsight, it just doesn't make sense as I'm trying to live a minimalist philosophy in my life. If you don't use something in a year or six months, then it shouldn't be really a part of your life uh, just to be sitting around. So the bicycle is one of those things. So here in the near future, I'll just put it on Craigslist or donate it, something like that, and be letting go of the bicycle because it's just something that has not worked out for me. And uh, certainly for some of you, if you're bicycle people and you ride on a regular basis, then Maybe a bike makes sense for you. Item number three is my garage. I just, I don't like it. Uh, it's just impossible to get anything out of the garage. I'm gonna run outside and show you what I mean. I have to be super careful opening up these doors because things oftentimes fall out. And it's just, this is the worst situation. I can't get access to anything. And I've seen Sprinter builds. They have these very elaborate slider drawers that they can slide everything and get access to stuff because this is five feet deep, 60 inches deep. And it's just impossible rather than, other than crawling in there on your hands and your knees to get to the other side of this. And you can see the bicycle in here like I was talking about earlier. And the bike blocks in this entire section back here so I can't get back there at all. I haven't been back in there for months months. I'm not even sure what all is back there. Um, it's just piles after piles of things back here. It's just an absolute mess or disorganized and I can't get at anything. The next item is ventilation in here. I put two max air ceiling fans in the ceiling. 
Uh, the fans are fantastic. Well, no, they're not fantastic. They're Max Air fans because that's a brand. But anyway, they're they're great fans. I like them a lot. Uh, they have temperature sensitivity. I don't have the remote controls. I didn't go for that option. But I can open them up, drive around when it's raining. It's uh, it's really a good system. But they don't really circulate the air when it gets hot in here. At least not enough. Uh, when it's 90 degrees or higher, it's just miserable in the step van. The only solution is opening up the rear doors and trying to get airflow above the mattress into the back of the step van through that small, narrow, square gap that's there. Um, there's just not enough airflow in here. Um, so I can change that a couple of ways, like put in a dedicated 12 volt fan in the back uh, or a fan somewhere else to circulate air from the front doors i don't know anyway I, I need to work on that ventilation is an issue and in the build not being able to really open up the rear doors and in say a walmart parking lot and worrying about people getting into the garage area which you just saw maybe i need a little security door so that i can lock up the garage area but open up the rear doors so that i can have airflow into the bed while i'm in the parking lot anyway it's an issue so uh, airflow, yeah, that's uh, something that I sort of wish I would have realized it's a little bit more important. The next item is this fridge down here. I have a Dometic fridge which I've mounted inside of this bench that I'm sitting on right now. I pulled off the cushion cover and the wood lid that normally goes over this so you can see the fridge. This is a wonderful, fantastic, amazing fridge. Uh, it's super efficient. Uh, it's super high-tech with like a Wi-Fi app that you can use to turn the temperature up and down. Why I would need that, I don't know, because there's little buttons on it. It's way easier to do that. But if you need to sit in bed and adjust your uh, fridge temperature, then this is the fridge for you. No, you don't need to do that. Um, anyway, so big fridge, but I just don't like having it in the bench and I have insulation around it and underneath it, so it's a little bit taller and so it's just... A little bit too tall to sit on it's awkward to get in and out when I have the cushions on the top and I just don't think I'm such a fan of the top loading fridge for getting things in and out of there so I'm debating uh, switching this out and going with something else just because it's not working out and then lowering the benches slightly people who have been in the step van over the past few months and sitting on these benches have noticed that they're pretty tall actually too tall for most people they're coming in like 23 24 inches something like that and people's legs are dangling and it's just uh, not working out so i've got to lower the benches and uh, probably end up selling my fridge here and going with something else maybe install a fridge over here in the uh, area underneath the bed in the garage area so that'll be a little bit better use of that space that's the idea right now anyway up here in the front of the step van, I have a jump seat that Paul and Fresno helped me build. I'll link the episode above where we've got that. It has a little drop down seat here. Most commercial step vans have jump seats right here. Um, they're very efficient, very cool, very nice, but not super comfortable for a passenger to ride around on long trips. So I think uh, in hindsight I would prefer having a standard like minivan or van seat put here slightly behind it uh, in the traditional area. Um, so I think that that's probably a better option for a long term solution. The last issue again is something that I got hundreds of comments on early in my build. I had decided to build this without a traditional bathroom or shower. Um, there's no toilet area, there's nothing like that. Originally I thought I would put something underneath one of the benches. That still has not been done. Um, and I'm thinking that probably in hindsight looking at other builds, other rigs, that um, I need some sort of option that's a little bit better than what I have. Uh, or what I have planned. So anyway, that is another one of those items that I think I would do a little bit differently. I'm not sure how in the existing layout and plans that I have now what I can do. Maybe it can still go underneath one of the benches. Um, this is another issue that's sort of a conundrum. Anyway, so that's the seven things that uh, you might call regrets. The things that I would do differently with my step van, knowing what I know now 
and having seen a number of rigs at the RTR event, Jamie's Van Build, uh, meeting other step van dwellers, um, these are the things that I think I would slightly uh, do different if I was starting over. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any thoughts, comments, uh, solutions, then please feel free to write some comments. I try to reply to as many of those as possible as I can. So uh, thank you again for all your input, your insights, uh, all your comments in the past, and your patience with me as I've been learning and growing in my build. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.